Hello. So, believe it or not, I lost track of time today. So I'm coming on a little bit. I think I'm like, I don't even know because I have no clock around here, which is um, intentional. But I'm thinking like maybe five or 10 minutes late coming on today. Coming on from inside the house because it's another windy day and I have the kids here with me today. Hi, Ronald, thanks for joining. Hey, Will, thanks for joining. So I'm glad y'all can make it on live and hopefully our connection goes well and all that stuff. Hey, Kim, thanks for joining. So we're talking about money and goal setting today. So we've been talking about the law of attraction um, as it relates to money and kind of like <laughs> going all off track and all that stuff, but it's good because it helps, right? So um, I had a mastermind call this morning with Diane, who's in this group. We're mastermind buddies. We've been mastermind buddies for like a year and a half and it's powerful. If you guys don't have an accountability partner or a mastermind buddy, hook up with somebody that you can talk to. We talk once a week and after we talk, it's like, boom, so many ideas. So I lost track of time because we got off the phone and I yelled at my kids because they were acting crazy. And um, then I just started working and it was like crazy. I was in the zone. So I kind of lost track of time. But um, what I wanted to come on and tell you guys today, so we've been talking about law of attraction. We've been talking about manifesting more money. Uh, we've been talking about mindset shifts and these are absolutely necessary to manifest more money. So there's two parts to it, and this is what I was talking about on Monday, that there's two parts to having more money. One part is your mindset, and the other part is your actual, like, like the, the processes that you do. Not the law of attraction processes, but your actual, like, the, um, the mindset part is like really woo-woo, right? And then the other part is really practical. It's like you can't just woo-woo your way, meaning like, you know, do mantras and meditation and expect money to fall into your lap. You also have to do some steps. And so I teach both of those. Like that's my jam is both of those. The only reason why this group is not 100% money all the time is that I like got a little bit tired of, <laughs> tired of doing money over and over again. But money is really where everything started for the group. Um, and I think that money is the first like Financial freedom is the key to all of your freedom. So once you start with getting your money together and getting freedom around your money and getting organized around your money, then you can move on to getting organized around your self-esteem, around getting your house to be peaceful and in order, and around getting your productivity up at work, work and at home. So that's kind of the progression. So really, this group will be organized in three-month blocks the first block is money, then comes getting your home together, and then comes being productive. And the reason it's that way is by design because that's the way it needs to flow. Because you can't really be more productive at work or get your self-esteem and your self-worth in check if you have in the back of your mind like your money's all messed up and you don't really feel confident. Like you can't walk around just telling yourself you feel confident and worthy when you really feel broke, right? You can't have like that broke mentality. So. That's what we work on. So the first day I talked about that and then um, about how there's two piece, pieces to it and you have to have both of them. And then yesterday we talked a lot about law of attraction and we went way off because everybody was um, um, commenting and stuff like that. So we were like all off track on everything, but it was all, it was all related, so it was good. Um, and so today we'll talk more about the practical stuff about doing your, I don't want to call it a budget because I want to call it an intentional spending plan because it's all about being intentional and it's all about getting organized around your money, which does not have to be boring or horrible, which I thought at first I'm like, man, that means I got to limit how much I spend on this, that, and the other, but really it means you get freedom around it because the way that I designed the budget diary is very fun to use. It's not, um, it's not like a boring spreadsheet. It's not anything technical or you have to be a mathematician. I always advocate for using a calculator. Like you're not in you know, grade school where you have to prove your work or show your work or anything like that. Use a calculator, like seriously, don't even try to do math in your head because why? Because why? You're a fully grown adult. You can 
use a calculator. So I wanted to show you the budget diary today. Um, I haven't put the listing up in the group yet because I want to tweak it a little bit to make it so that you guys can see, like make it easy for you to find. I mean, it's up there, but I don't know. This It's my, in my own head. But I want to show it to you and then we can work through it if you want to, like if you're interested in, if you have questions about your budget or you're interested in learning how to do this, a couple things. One is that when you buy the budget diary, it comes with tutorial videos. Like that's a bonus to buying it. Is it has tutorial videos already built in. The other thing is we can do this together as a group because I find that I have more fun if when I'm doing it if somebody else is doing it too. And that way if you have questions, you can get them answered like live. But I'll show it to you. Well, world planners the first page is intentions you know you're setting your intentions um, because that's a that's part of the woo woo part of it once you set your intentions and you write them down you kind of declare to the universe what you want to happen so you set your intentions why you're why you're getting out of debt if that's what you're doing why you're saving money and your why is the most important thing so here's you don't have to know how you don't have to know how you're gonna get out of debt. You don't know how, have to know how you're gonna save a bunch of money to go to college or to um, send your kids to college. Like the how is not your business. So one thing we say in law of attraction community is to take how out of your vo vocabulary. You never need to know how. Don't even spend time trying to figure out how, right? Like if you wanna be a millionaire, don't sit there and go like, hmm, I wonder, okay, here's how I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do it. That's none of your business because all you have to do is say why. Once you decide, I'm gonna be a millionaire and this is why I wanna be a millionaire, you know, I wanna send my kids to college, I wanna have enough money for myself and enough to share with people, I wanna give big, I wanna give big donations. Remember when that guy did the, um, did the commencement address and he like paid off everybody's student debt like right then and there like i want to give big i want to be that guy i want to be standing up there with so much money i can give away a bunch of money like once you decide your why the universe god source will take care of the how you don't have to figure out how so don't even spend time trying to figure out how right that's the beauty of this whole situation all you need to know is why so the law of attraction is also built into the budget diary, which is why I love it so much, which is why we got out of debt so fast, because every single page has a mantra on the top, has something to remind you to like connect with the universe, um, and it's also really inspiring. So there are pages on there to put in your debt snowball, I'm crushing my debt, um, and it's built in, so the, it's a container for your journey you don't have to figure it out you don't have to it's like some people tell me oh I just use a notebook and then you have a notebook and it's a blank page and then you have to figure out what goes on this page where does it go I made this as fill in a blank as possible because I know for me like I could be figuring out like I was like I'm not a mathematician I'm not an economist I'm not like a financial planner I was like I don't know what how I'm supposed to do this to make it efficient so I learned I learned, I educated myself, I read so many books. I read so, well I had a long commute so I would listen to them on Audible. I read so many books, I listened to so many podcasts, I read so many blogs, like hundreds and hundreds of hours of research just so I can make it, I made it for myself and I tweaked it and I tweaked it and I tweaked I kept listening and learning and kept making it better and better and better. And then last summer in July, I had about seven girls that I asked them like, hey, can you guys come? We're gonna work on this. We got into a private Facebook group. We worked on it more. They gave me some ideas based on what they needed to do, like what they were working on in their life because I had made it for my personal situation. So I helped to figure out like what they were needed to do. So I made it better. I redid it again in December and made it better. And now I'm like, it's perfect, right? So it is perfect for people who have a goal, right? If you have a goal around your money, the budget diary is perfect for you. If you're just like, I just need a place to write down, you know, where my paycheck is going. Okay, that's fine. There's like a ton of things that you can use to write down where your paycheck is going. 
But if you are trying to do something and get somewhere and you have a goal and you, you need a plan, that's what this is for. So that's what I'm telling you about it. Um, so when I was saying it, it's a container, what that means is it tells you what goes where. So it'll tell you what to put in the boxes. So there's no, you know, you don't have to try to figure that out. It's right there for you. And this is how we paid off all of our debt so fast. There's a place where you can put in your net worth. You can figure it out, put your assets, put your liabilities. There's a, um, a page that sh tells you what assets and liabilities are, like how to know what that even is and how to figure out what your net worth is. There's a page that tells you about fixed expenses and um, variable expenses and what those are, what are examples of fixed and variable expenses. That way you can figure those out and then you can write down what your fixed and variable expenses are. I mean, it's really, really helpful, not just for your monthly budget, but for everything that leads into it. There's a page about winning. I'm winning every month. And don't worry guys, there is one that doesn't have like ladies all over it. I mean, you know, if you want that, then that's fine. But um, so there's a page where you can record your win. So every month, hey Paula, thanks for watching. Every month you can put what happened that month that was like a positive thing that happened. Like you paid off a credit card or you got a raise at work. Like these, all these magical things happen and every month we have a win. And what happens is we have months where we feel down. And when you feel down, you think like, nothing good is happening, I'm not making any progress. And so the winning every month page is the one that you look back to when you feel discouraged and you can see like, oh, wait a minute, I did, I did have some really good things happening this year and it keeps you on track. So that's built in to encourage you and to inspire gratitude. So that's the whole point of that. I'm not gonna go through every single page, but I'm just, I just wanna show you the most important ones. There's also a calendar in here that I call the cash calendar. And that's the first step when you're starting to design your budget. And designing a budget, it's a process. And it's not anything that you have to beat yourself up on. Because like I said, this entire process is supposed to be fun. Um, when you're looking at law of attraction and how things work, hey Jairus, thanks for joining. When you're looking at law of attraction and how things work, you need to operate in a relaxed state, in a fun state, in a, a highest level of excitement, right? Good vibes. So you don't want to approach your money, which is something that we deal with every single day with like bad vibes. Like, why would you do that? That just repels money. If you're coming at money with like some kind of like, you know, not good feelings, you're just gonna repel money. It's not gonna be attractive to you. So the way, the reason I made the budget diary was to make it like good vibes. I get in here, it's colorful, it makes me feel happy, it's exciting, and um, and it's easy. You don't want it to be hard. You want it to be something that's easy. So like I said, people always tell me, I don't need that, I can use, you know, I got a spreadsheet, I can use my notebook, that's fine. But you're missing out because you're missing out on the good vibes and the ease that this brings. So that is my big pitch. Um, so if you, if you see, like if you watch the, the videos that go along, the, um, the tutorial videos that go along with the budget diary, the very first step before anything else is to look at the previous month's expenses. Now, this is July 1st and congratulations, this is like a new quarter, which is so exciting to me. I love it when there's a new quarter because that means there's a new 12 week goal new set of 12 week goals that I'm gonna be working towards. And so you guys are along for the ride for that. So I hope that you have 12 week goals too. We can make them together, but like I said, it starts with money. It's always gonna start with money. So what you do is you look at, so this is July 1st, so you look at June. And basically if you do online banking or you have a statement that comes, either way, you just look at all of your expenses and you plot them out on a calendar. I'll show you what time. I have a cash calendar in here. You plot them out on a cash calendar. This is just a calendar. A calendar that says cash calendar at the top. But I didn't even put the, the dates in here yet. But you plot them out so that you can see it as a pattern, right? And the first time, hey Sandy, 
The first time you do it, you won't see a pattern because obviously there's no trend. So it takes about three months. I think Dave Ramsey even says like three to six months before you really get a handle on it. But then, I mean, by then you're like cooking with gasoline. So you, um, you plot out your expenses on the calendar um, and then you start to see when you spend the heaviest, when there's like a little gap where there's nothing coming out of the account and you just kind of, you can see what the pattern is. So this becomes important later on, especially when you're getting out of debt, because if, you, um, if you're gonna budget every penny, there's a point in time in the end of the month where you get a little nervous. It's like, whoa, whoa, you know, <laughs> like what's gonna hit at the end of the month? Cause my, you know, my um, checking account is getting low, right? But if you have it plotted out on a calendar where you can see the pattern, you can easily look back at the previous month and I used to do this all the time and just be like, okay, we're good because there's nothing else that's going to hit for the rest of the month. Or you have, you know, the light bill and the gas bill are going to hit at the end of the month, but it'll be fine. It won't be more than what we have in the account. So you can end up budgeting all the way to zero. Um, I was doing this. This is how we got out of debt really, really fast. My husband used to get nervous because he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, don't worry. Like, I already know what, what's going on. I already have it. I can tell you exactly what's happening. And that's the difference between just kind of like, you know, paying your bills and going with the flow versus having an intention and having a plan. All right, so I was talking to Diane earlier today because I was having some blocks about this. Like, I even have trouble telling people about this. And um, I realized today why I have trouble talking. Can you please stop kicking your feet? I don't even know where Grace went. But I realized today why I have trouble telling people about this and like, I don't I have trouble advertising it, <laughs> even though I made it and it's awesome. Um, and I've been telling you guys that too, like, okay, I'm gonna advertise it. But I have trouble doing that. And I realized today is because it feels like, it feels like a little bit crazy feels a little bit crazy um, and it's something it feels like it feels like a lot like like people would be like oh my gosh seriously I'm gonna write down all my expenses on the calendar like why am I gonna do that um, and when me and Diane were talking about it this is kind of what happened from our conversation what I got out of our conversation because she was we were like we coach each other and stuff and she was like helping me think through this but I've bought products before. Like I've bought printables, I bought planners because I'm a planner junkie. I love planners, I have planners all around me and I know a lot of people in this group love planners. And so I've bought other people's products and I feel like, like okay, this is cool, but I need, you know, and it's like this next level of something I need. And because I make my own, I'll try to like take their thing and then add my pages to it and make it work and what I realize about the ones that I make is that it's everything. It's like more than what you need. And so I feel a little embarrassed about that sometimes because I'm like, this looks like OCD. Like who is doing this, right? But when I was talking to Diane, I was like, you know what? You know who's doing this? You know who appreciates this? This is for somebody who has a goal and they are not playing around. Like this is for somebody who is on a mission. So that empowered me to talk to you guys about this today. Because on the one hand, you could have somebody be like, look at this girl, like she is tripping, like this is a lot of work, this is like all of these pages and she want me to fill out this workbook about my money and all of this, but that's not for you if you feel that way. If you feel like this is too much, it's not for you. But if you have a goal and you are on a mission, this is what you need. And I feel 100% confident in saying that now, which I wasn't before, because I didn't realize that the people that I'm talking to who will need this are people who have a mission. You are in debt and you need to be free, right? So we, I can't be playing with that message. I cannot play with that message and dance around it and say, well, you know, if you want it, you can. It's cute, it's, it's no, it's not about that. This is about getting you out of debt, getting you free. You have kids, I have kids, my kids are four years old. My husband's like, we're behind in saving for college. We won't be behind because I have a tool that's gonna get us there fast. We had, where did I put it? I have it written down somewhere, but we had like, 
$562,242.72 or something like that. Like we had like over $500,000 in debt and it looked like an impossible situation. It looks like this is never gonna be paid off. Like how did you even do that, right? Like it was crazy, but I had a mission. I had a mission. I'm gonna pay off this debt and this came from that mission. And that's how I know for sure that if you are on a mission to pay off your debt or to save a ton of money, this is what you need. So we paid off our debt in 14 months. The way I had it calculated out, and I made a lot of money, but the way I had it calculated out, it was gonna take like five years. But when I did it this way, it took 14 months because I got super organized. Wow. I knew where every penny was going. And I knew how to, to fix it and make it right. And plus I was using a lot of attraction. So, that that's who I'm talking to somebody who is like I have goals I have dreams especially if like for me I wanted to not work where I was working not just where I was working but I didn't want to have that rat race I wanted to be more present for my kids so that was my mission right that was my why that was my why and like I was telling you you don't have to figure out the how all you need is the why and when your why is strong enough it'll fuel you it'll motivate you and then you'll start getting these little intuition hits these little downloads of saying okay here's your next step here's your next step so creating this thing was definitely a next step because once i did that it was easy for me each month i was actually looking at it every day and then every week and then every month each month i could go back to it and i wouldn't have to figure out what i was doing to reinvent the wheel because it's a container it has the it tells you okay this is what you do next month this is what we did this month and this is where you write what and it's easy just fill in the blank right so it made it super easy for me to, to keep track of everything. Um, I was gonna tell you something else if I can't remember. Something about setting goals. Yeah, but so if you're in this group, usually it's because you are trying to uh, set goals. I know what it was, um, being on a mission. So we, I was on a mission to pay off all the debt because I knew that if I paid off all the debt, you know how you have like monthly bills and some of them are things you financed? I knew that if all those things that we financed was out of the picture, that we wouldn't need that much to live on. You don't need that much, right? Like even we sold our house. If we sell the house, we won't have the mortgage. So instead of having to pay like $2,000 a month for a mortgage, we live in this apartment, it's like $800 a month, and that's all the extra money that we can save to do with something else. So we were doing stuff like that and um, really cutting down the expenses. So once the debt was gone, it was like boom. That's like all gravy. So I saved all from the time we paid off the debt, which was a year ago, till now, all the extra money, I was just saving, 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 saving. So now I don't have to work. Um, and we have it all saved. Um, but I have people who use the budget diary who have a lot of credit cards and they're paying off their credit cards and just knocking them suckers out one by one by one. So if you can imagine not having your credit card bill, right? Being able to pay for what you want at one point our washing machine broke and I was able to just go online find the one I wanted and just buy it like straight out not have to finance it or anything like that and just buy it because we didn't have all this debt all this monkey on our back um, I had another person who wanted to get an advanced degree like she wanted to go back to school and pay for the college like she wanted to bankroll the college like not get student loans and be all trapped up in that just to actually like pay for it she was able to do that um somebody wanted to buy a house she wanted to put a down payment on the house so she was saving like little by little by little just saving her money saving her money but then she started using this planner and it was like you get organized and you can see where you can put extra in and then save a lot more a lot faster so that is the mission that i mean if you have goals around your money you need a tool that's gonna get you there. You don't need a notebook where you can just hear there and everywhere kind of once in a while put some stuff together and figure it out. No, if you're on a mission, that's a whole different energy than just being like, yeah, sure, this is this is great. I sit with my husband and you know, once a month and we look at the money. No, 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 no. No, no. So I was ashamed before because I'm like, oh, this is like this is a lot. But it is a lot and it pays off a lot. So that is what we're doing this month. We're talking about money. If you 
if you want the budget diary, I will give you the link to get it. If you want to just do it on your own, that's fine too. But what we're doing this month, we're combining money mindset and we're combining a practical budgeting. I don't even want to call it budgeting because it's intentional spending. Um, and of course, like what I was telling you before, as far as money mindset, if you're afraid of your money, you got to get over the fear. Probably every Wednesday I may wear my Alexander Hamilton t-shirt because it's like cash needs to be your friend. I got my guy sitting on my desk. Yes, I did laminate money. That's what I'm saying. People gonna think I'm crazy. Why am I taking this message to the street? They're gonna be like, this good. Somebody needs to go lock her up. But I do. I keep my money laminated, put it on my desk so I can look over and keep, you know, keep my mind on my money and my money on my mind. And sometimes you have to do these things if you're starting from a place of having a real broke mindset, a real poverty mindset, sometimes you have to do these little tricks just to get yourself in the right frame of mind. I had to do that. I had a lot of baggage and, and um, things around money and rich people and all this stuff that I had to get through and get over. And these little weird little tricks, these processes, that's how I did it. Um, oh, I wanted to tell you guys about July. So is July. Every July for the last three years, I've done a no buy July. That means, <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? No buy July. That means, and it rhymes, so it's perfect. Um, let me see how many days are in this one. Is it 31? Yes, 31 days in July. So we are going to basically have a no spend month, a no buy July. So what this means, and it's a challenge for our group. I just thought of it like 10 minutes ago, so I have to put something in the group to let everybody else know. But what we're gonna do is a challenge. For the entire month of July, we only buy necessities. No extra luxury stuff, you know, just to challenge yourself to see if you can do these following things. Number one, eat all the food that's already in your house, right? Like eat the stuff from the pantry, eat the stuff from the freezer. If you have a deep freeze in the garage like we used to, eat out of that. Because a lot of times we are going to the store, we are buying extra stuff and we already have it in the house. So just look first, look in the cupboards before you go out to the store and just buy something again. I throw away so much food that's expired because it's like, why, you know, instead of looking to see if we had spaghetti, I just went to the store and got more spaghetti. So try that, no by July. The next thing is repurposing things. So um, I was talking to Diane and she was like, she wanted a blue uh, bird bath for her yard, but she was on the no spend in June. And she was like, you know, it was so much more fun when I went around the yard to find other things that I can make into a bird bath and I, you know, she created several like bird bath things around her entire property um, by putting water in like things that she already had. And it was, it was more fun than just going out and buying something and bringing it home with all the other stuff that you have, right? And I did a no buy July last year and it was so much fun because I needed, oh, I can't remember, at one point I needed like a table or something. And I went around the house to find something else that would be suitable and I found, I found something that was even better. And so that is, it's, it makes you more creative, it makes you have more gratitude, it makes you appreciate the things you already have, and it keeps you from spending money, which is always a bonus. So it's just a, um, it's like an experiment, but it's a, it's a challenge. So it's not to say don't buy anything, it's more to say think twice before you purchase something. Just think twice and see, do I really need this or is there something already in this house that I could use that would be just as good, if not better. It's fun, it actually is. So. I know it's, I don't know, people do. We did a no spend year last year where it was like the whole year we did that. And um, of course we spent, we spent a lot <laughs> on stuff that I didn't need. But my whole point was to think twice and I did. And it was phenomenal. So the incredible thing that happens is you start to question what's a need versus what's a want. Like what is a necessity and what is something that I, it's just, I just want it to make. I specifically asked her not to jump into this video. So the fact that she just jumped in with the smile, that's intentional. <laughs> Y'all, it's gonna be, oh man, working from home is something else. Yes, so Grace and Jude are home and they are letting their presence be made known. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so it does, it actually makes you, it makes you appreciate how much you already have. Cause a lot of times we feel like, oh, I need this, I need that, let me go out and buy it. And really, do you really need that? You know, I had, like, when I did it for the whole year, I remember I ran out of makeup. And I was like, is makeup a need or a want? And then uh, I didn't buy new makeup. And then I actually realized, yeah, I think it's a need. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought some. But it was just, it was, you know, it's an experiment. It actually makes you grow as a person. There were a lot of lessons that I got out of doing a no buy. It was just like, you allow, like you make space for miracles to happen because if you decide that you're not gonna spend on a certain thing and give it a day or two, the interesting, and plus you're focusing on this thing that you feel like you need, somebody will bring it to you and then it's like you have so much more gratitude that somebody just randomly brought something to you. It's like, oh my gosh, like I, this is, I was thinking and I wanted this. So many miracles happened that year. We did the, the no buy for the whole year and it was just amazing. And we just increased and increased and increased because we, I had no, I had learned the difference between a need and a want. And so I wasn't just always, I was on Amazon y'all. Like you have the app for yeah. Amazon, you know? I have a thought in my head and I'd be like, it'll be here in two days. I wouldn't even think twice. Like I was just shopping, shopping, shopping. It's just so easy to just tap that on your phone. It's already connected to your credit card. And it's like, boom, you know? And But when I went on a no buy, I'd be like, hold on. And I would think twice and I would look around my house to see if I already have something that could make do for the same purpose. And it was just, it was amazing. So. Challenging you to a no buy. No buy July. Let's see how it goes. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. To who? Everybody. Sandy's watching. Jairus is watching. Miss Paula is watching. Kim is watching. You know, Auntie Kim, she's watching. Will is watching. And Ronald is watching. So thank you guys for watching. I do want to get in a room today and do some, um, do some of your budgets. Um, 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 today is my husband's first day working, so I'm thinking that I want to cook dinner for him as, um, and have a little party. Uh, it's, you mean a garden party? Yeah, a garden party. We can eat outside and all that. So we may do that. So maybe we won't do it today yeah. unless we do it early. I don't know. I still got a homeschool for today. Why well, I don't so. want to do homeschool. Yeah, you do. No, I don't want to do homeschool. Anyway, so I'm going to say goodbye now. If there are no comments, if you guys have comments or questions, please leave them um, down below and I will answer every single one. Relax, relax here, relax. relax. Then what's the magic board one? The magic board one. I don't know, board. Grace. So, yeah, otherwise I will see you yet. tomorrow. Tomorrow is um, Thursday Q&A. So definitely we will be on and popping with the questions and answers. So leave me um, a comment on the thread for Thursday Q&A and I will answer those questions. I also have a ton of questions. When we were doing a self-worth month, um, um, one person would, had DM'd me like a whole lot of questions about money. And I was like, oh, when we get to money month, it's gonna be on. So I'm gonna use her questions too for money month. She had a lot of questions about money and law of attraction and just keeping the faith and just knowing that what you want is wanting you and you will meet up if you do the right things. So I love, love, love talking about it. So we will talk about that. And yeah, I'm gonna put up, when I do put up the listing for you guys, I will put a, um, a picture in the group so you can see uh, which budget diary I'm talking about. Paula, I sent you one because I sent your planner out. So you have a, um, I think it's a two month one already. So if you're using it, or if you wanna use it while we're doing this, then please let us know how it goes. If anybody else has the budget diary or the magic money planner, let us know how it's been working out for you because I love hearing those stories of people like getting free. Let's get free. We need to be free um in 2020 we need to just break out of all of these old habits and Mommy, let it be refreshed number? and do something Mommy, new bring something number? new into the world what's and just be free and number, financial Mommy? freedom is the key what's to all freedom number, okay Ow. all right what, is that what? The for you to be quiet <laughs> bye pray for me i pray for you this